Well, hello, I am Matt Williamson. This episode is brought to you by Live Casino, and I want to carry over some things we talked about yesterday as well as wrap up Steelers Browns. Folks, football season is here, and Live Casino is where FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sports betting app, comes to life. Step up and place your bets at our self service kiosk or with a sportsbook representative. Then cheer on your team and catch every heart pounding moment of action on our huge 40 foot video wall. Bet, watch, and win at Live Casino Pittsburgh, Route 30 at the Westmoreland Mall. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Um, I talked a lot yesterday about Steelers' EPA rankings. Um, and I wanted to dig into DVOA as well and see if they correlated. I'm a big EPA fan, expected points added. They factor in who you play against, all those good things. And I wanted to weigh it against DVOA, which Football Outsiders does. And I'll be quick about that. I'm not going to nerd out too much on that. But just to show where this team was by some metrics that I really trust, EPA and DVOA, And again, I thought EPA was a little rough on the Steelers' D by passing the eyeball, you know, the eyeball test that I had seen, obviously, and was a little kind to the offense. And I'm kind of agreeing with DVOA a little bit more. So let's just dig in. So their final ranks for the Steelers for the entire season were the 14th best team in the league. I mean, that's start to finish 17 games. The Steelers finished in Football Outsiders DVOA. 14th overall. Pretty good all in all, especially considering that first half of the year was a disaster. They ended up with the 18th overall offense. That weighs, that adds up to me a little bit as well. And again, that's for the whole year. The 12th best defense. Again, I think that's about where they were start to finish. They had some low moments, of course. And this is an area of concern too. And just to pull back the curtain, when it comes to special teams ranks or previewing games throughout the year, I basically just go to Football Outsiders and look at their special teams ranks. I'm not going to watch the Browns, the long snappers and whatnot, and, you know, their whole special teams and their gunners. So I just trust them. But the Steelers came in this year as the 27th ranked special teams. Um, I went back and looked over the last five, six years where they've been, and they won down year. They had won good year, but mostly the Steelers are somewhere from like 13 to 16 in final special teams rankings on DVOA. It's not great. Uh, Boz missing kicks didn't help. They allowed some more returns than you'd like. Harvin was up and down. I trust Boz to get it right. Um, But this is more telling to me, and this is what we did with EPA yesterday as well, is I sorted it, I filtered it just by post buy. So, I took week 10 until week 18. Again, that's nine games. And saw where the Steelers stacked up against the rest of the league in the final half of the season. They were the seventh best team in the league in DVOA from from week 10 on. Seventh best team in the league. This team's doing good things, people. Tenth best offense. You'll take that. Fourth best defense. That added up to me. I mean, I think that that was pretty spot on. And they also account for opponents. So it's not just, well, they didn't play anybody. So seventh best team from week 10 on in the whole league. Tenth best offense. Fourth best defense. Again, special teams remained a problem just isolating the second half of the year. In fact, it was worse. 29th overall. So I also, some of you are new to my work. I've been doing this a long time, but... When the offseason rolls around, uh, some of the people I work with like to make fun of me that Williamson starts whipping out the spreadsheets. Well, I did my first spreadsheet of the year last night, and it really centered around the Steelers, but I use it for the entire league, of course. And what I wanted to find out, because if you ask me right now, what needs changed the most on the field for the Steelers next year is they need more explosive plays on offense. And... I, like most of the league, uh, define explosive plays as running plays of 10 or more yards, pass plays of 20 or more yards. So those are the parameters we're going off of. And to be honest, that's a little bit kind to the Steelers because they'll do their share of 10-yard runs and 20-yard receptions. 
they don't have their share of 20 yard runs or 40 yard receptions or, you know, game flipping plays. So these numbers are kinder to the Steelers because of the parameters that most people use for quote explosive plays. And maybe I'll go back and filter it again and look at 20 yard runs, 40 yard receptions. Cause I bet the Steelers will be last. And frankly, I thought the Steelers were going to be worse in these. I thought they would be the bottom three in the league in explosives. And they weren't. So maybe it was a little better than the eyeball test, the tape watching, you know, displayed to me. But I still think explosive plays are a huge problem with this offense and, you know, needs to be addressed in a multitude of ways. Um, Along those lines, my article for this week that goes up Wednesday is going to be focusing on fixing the offense. Next week, I'm going to give my plan for fixing the defense. Explosives will come up. So here's what I came up with. So uh, in the whole season, the Steelers were 21st in explosive plays. 22nd in terms of explosive percentage. And let me explain that a little bit too. Like if I run, if team A runs 200 more plays than team B, you're going to have more explosive plays. You know I mean? Just so what I did was who has the most explosive plays and who's also creating the most explosive plays per snap. So I just called that explosive percentage. And in this case, they're almost the same ranks anyway. But in some teams, it wasn't. I mean, there were teams out there that didn't run many plays, but when they did, they created a lot of explosives. The Steelers happened to just correlate almost exactly the same. So they were 21st in explosive plays, 22nd in explosive play percentage. Again, neck and same thing. I probably shouldn't even have brought it up. But anyway, explosive runs. And again, this is 10 or more. So that's not, that, that's what the Steelers will bust, bust off some 10s. They won't bust off any 50s. I mean, Najee Harris' is longest run of his career is 37 yards. So they were 17th in explosive runs, 19th in explosive run percentage. They also ran the ball a lot. So you're going to get more explosive runs. Sure. I mean, that's part of the beauty of it. Um, explosive passes. To me, this is the bigger problem because the run game doesn't need to change. You just live with it not breaking off 80 yarders. You know, you're not going to go get a new back. You know, there's other things to deal with. So I really think that you need to ex- more explosive passing. Um, and they were 24th in explosive pass plays this year um, and as well as explosive pass percentage. So I expected that number to be 30. And again, my hunch is if it's 40 or yard, you know, 40 or longer, they'd be much lower. But my spreadsheet didn't back me up as much as I wanted in this case, but it was a lot of good information that I'll reference all year for all the teams. Um, And I will take a quick break here and then we're going to wrap up what we saw on Sunday and a couple other little nuggets here. So I promised you a lot of you guys appreciate my snap count breakdown. So I wanted to do it. I've done it for every game this year. Let's do it for the Browns. When I recorded yesterday, it hadn't been out yet. Things are moving a little slower. Um, So the Steelers played 73 offensive snaps, which is a big number. You want to play a ton of snaps on offense, obviously. Um, Their wide receiver distribution was Johnson for 60, Pickens for 46, a little low for me. I mean, he only played 46 of 73 snaps. I, I don't really even care what the situation was unless there was a an injury I didn't know about, which I still don't know about. Sims for 33. It's a bit much. I mean, especially if Pickens is only playing 46. Uh, Gunner for 13. Now we're talking. You know, Gunner for 20, 25, like we've seen for much of the year, is not for me. 13 I can live with. Boykin for 11. So... These aren't super unusual. You know, the the pick and Sims 46 to 33 stands out. Don't love that. The Any defense you face would much rather have Sims on the field in any situation than Pickens. Um, the tight end distribution, 
is a little skewed because Fryermuth got hurt. Um, but he did play 46 of those 73 snaps and was I think he's back to being an every down player that was a blip for a couple weeks there when he was dealing with the foot. Um, Gentry was out there for 42 snaps. He comes up quite a bit in my article, by the way, and Hayward for 25. So I'm fine, Fryermuth injury or not, Hayward playing 25 snaps a game. I think that's where he needs to be. That's where he deserves. He causes problems. I think you guys know I am a Hayward fan. Um, defensive snap counts. Steelers played 64 snaps overall. Their D line dis- distribution was kind of interesting to me in that it was really only two guys. I mean, Cam played 54 of 64. Ogan Joby played 44 of 64. And then just a massive drop off. I mean, for a game they were winning too. I mean, you could have got those guys out a little bit more, but not a ringing endorsement for the other people. Uh, Louder Milk played 17. Alu Alu played 16, which I have to think are probably his last 16 snaps as a Steeler. Um, great career, thanks, but you no longer get it done. Liao only played 15, so a lot of people were excited about Liao, and I, I understand that. He may be a starter next year or a 75% snap count guy, but they're not using him as much as people indicate and or other people in the media will tell you, like, oh, Leal's coming on strong. Played 15 out of 64 snaps, and that's basically his max at this point. Um, Alu, like I said, Alu, Alu played 16, Adams played 10. I have no reasoning or logic behind why Alu, Alu would outsnap Adams. I'm not going to look too much into it. Such is life. Season's over. Who cares? Um, but the linebacker snap count was very interesting. Again, Spillane never left the field. 64 out of 64. I mean, he really took over the last last month of the year as the every down linebacker for this team. And the defense was very good. I can't fight the results. You know, I'm sure he's doing things out there that I don't appreciate in terms of aligning guys and wearing the green dot and all that. But all I can think about is, I mean, I'm going to get you guys too excited, but what if that was Roquan Smith for 64 snaps or Edmonds or Long or... You know, there's actually like six or seven linebackers in free agency that I'm very excited about. So if it wasn't Spillane for 64 snaps is all I could think about. So that is what it is at this point. But um, Jack was only out there for 22. I mean, this guy just doesn't see the field much anymore. And I think it's all injury related. I think you need to move on. Robinson, kind of like the Leal conversation, only played 11 snaps. Yeah, he shows up. He's exciting, but he's not playing a high number of snaps. And I have no logic behind this, but I think they're just done with Bush. I mean, he's not on practice reports for injuries all lately. Only played five snaps in this game. Like, if they just are they just done with this guy? Are they just looking at it like, I know who you are. You're not going to be back after the year. Failed experiment. Sure looks that way with the way they've used him the last couple of weeks. Um, last thing I have here is a little bit of stock up, stock down. Pickett played better than I thought when I watched him the second time around. And wasn't his best game. I don't know if it was his worst either. But watching him go through his progressions, move safeties, doing more advanced level quarterback stuff than a lot of rookies do. I'm, I'm going to put him on the stock up from what I initially thought watching the game. I've been hard on Gentry, um, particularly as a blocker, because really that's all he does, and I think he's a little bit of an overrated blocker. But he played a very good game in this one as well, so that was an encouraging deal for him. He's a free agent after the year. As is his buddy Hayward, I already kind of mentioned him before when we talked snap counts. He seems to get better every week to me. Steelers secondary has is going to be a huge topic of conversation these coming weeks because there's a bunch of free agents. They could be in the market for a first, second round corner. The entire secondary I have is entire secondary exclamation point in the up category. They were fantastic. You know, and when, when you watch a coach's tape too, there were not many, you know, open guys for Watson. So I was hard on Watson. I don't take that back. But a big reason he was holding the ball as long as he was, was guys weren't open. You know, I mean, that doesn't mean it's okay to hold the football as a quarterback, but the Steelers were locking down their coverage guys. Um, I always like to throw a bone to the opponent, too. Njoku played a very good game, too. I mean, he's he's a keeper for them. I think he's going to be a problem for the Steelers for years. He's a quickly developing tight end. Um, my stock down guys uh, were 
both offensive tackles. I mean, I mentioned that they left more on an island against Garrett. Way too much for my liking. Once is way too much for my liking on a pass play. I didn't think it was Chuke's best day either. Uh, offensive tackles kind of are who they are, and they'll be back, and that's fine with me. I'm good with that. But it wasn't a tremendous game by either of the offensive tackles for the Steelers. Um, talked about Robinson, the linebacker, playing 11 snaps. They weren't great 11 snaps. He was kind of all over the place. So just pump the brakes on Robinson. Don't just think all of a sudden you got the the next Kendrell Bell or something. I mean, he's, he's going to take some time. And Spillane played every snap, but I didn't think he played particularly well. And I love the pick on Spillane. I get that. But they weren't a very impactful 64 snaps for my liking. Uh, last nugget, and I planned, I thought this would be news by now, and maybe it is by the time you listen. I was hoping to talk Matt Canada. Is he back? Is he not? Who are some people that they should look at? And I also wanted to you know, talk about Flores a little bit too. I think he could be linked to the Texans. They wanted him a, a great deal before and just settled for Lovey last year. He's already been linked to the Browns. I'm sure he'll be linked to a lot of defensive coordinator jobs. So kind of just pushing those on the back burner because we don't know much, but I thought by now we kind of would. Um, it's really all I got. So happy trails. Uh, we will talk tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, depending if there's coaching news amongst the Steelers. Um, I'll review what I went over in my article, um, read it, comment on it, but I'll, I'll talk through it as well. All right. Over and out. <laughs>